Good afternoon, everybody, and a big happy Friday to you all. I hope you've had a good week. So welcome along to Google Digital Garage this afternoon for our Find Customers with Google Maps. We've got a jam-packed 60 minutes coming up, so let's get through some of the housekeeping for you and get straight into it. So my name is Glenn, and I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. I'm an experienced digital marketer, business consultant uh, and so finding tools like google maps is something that i've worked with businesses to help them really really excel with, in relation to their online presence and help them to get found so i'm really looking forward to today's session with you now i am joined in the chat by the wonderful sarah you can see sarah she's got sarah b and there is a little blue spanner just by the side of her name. So I can see a couple of hellos. Hello to Jane Kohler from Norfolk. Welcome Norfolk along. Uh, part of the world I know quite well, got some friends down there. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Please everyone pop into chat. Please do say hello. Let us know why you're here today. Let us know if you're already using Google Maps or Google Business Profile uh, to help you promote your business. It's really good to get to know you a little bit as we go. This is a live session. Um, we're being broadcast live on YouTube, as you can see right now. So I'm going to try and keep up with some of the comments in the chat as best I can. Uh, but Sarah will also better pass me over some of your comments as we work through too. Sarah's going to answer your questions as we go, pretty much. There is a section at the end for some questions, but hopefully we'll have cleared most of those up by the time that we get there, uh, because this is, as I've mentioned, quite a jam-packed session. So sign into your YouTube account if you can't see the chat. Create yourself a YouTube account if you don't have one, because one of the benefits of having that is the history function. So if you're watching this with your Google account, your Google browser now, and uh, you go into your YouTube account, you're going to be able to watch that back for the next 24 hours or so. Again, just to have a look at all of the information that we have to give you this afternoon. So this is part of a much broader offering of uh, training that's available on Google Digital Garage. That's g.co forward slash digital garage. So go along there, book yourself up for other training sessions, other live broadcasts. There's also some, there are no cost training courses on there as well. The fundamentals of digital marketing is going to be a really good uh, thing to consider if you're looking to overall promote yourself online and get to grips with a lot of the finer detail to achieve that. That's the fundamentals of digital marketing. So do sign up, sign up for as many of these sessions as you want to sign up for as many times as you like. And you will also start to then get the perspectives of different trainers as well. Okay, so I think that that is pretty much the housekeeping done. If you are having any difficulty, by the way, with sound or with vision right now, then please do just refresh your browser. It's that age old adage, I think, of if it's not working, shut it down and open it up again. It seems to fix a lot of those ills because we obviously want to get you the most benefit out of the session today. And I can see uh, Paul uh, of Roma, uh, Oisa Moji. Hello from Lagos. Hello to Lagos as well. Now, I seem to have picked up a bit of a frog in the throat today. So bear with me if I need to take an occasional sip of water. Just to make that a little bit smoother for you as well. So let's move straight into the content. We've split the session into three distinct sessions as we work through. So remember, again, revisit the webinar with the link you came in on today or go to the history part of your YouTube account. So we're going to help you first create a Google business profile, get yourself set up. So immediately, as I've mentioned, let us know already if you have a Google business profile. We'd love to know. Secondly, we're going to optimize our Google business profile. And then lastly, we're going to manage it. We're going to have a look at some extra features and ways, again, to really use this fantastic no cost tool to you and your business's best advantage. So to get us going, we're going to try a little exercise. And this is one for you to, again, please do input into the chat. You're going out for dinner tonight. It could well be. It's Friday night. And finding a restaurant that you'd like to go to. So this is really helping us to get into the mindset of our customers. The patterns that you use, the habits that you've got when you're using search, when you've got a challenge and you're trying to find out some information, it's going to be, you know, there are going to be some commonalities in that across the board, I think. So it's really nice to know how did you what did you type in when you're looking for that restaurant? How did you find the information out? You know, are you going to maps? You're going to Google search. How do you find this information? 
So you might have typed something along the lines of Italian restaurant near me or steakhouse in Shoreditch if you're in Shoreditch. How do you search for your restaurant? Um, I would generally put the type of food that I'm after and then put near me afterwards. Near me is a great keyword in terms of local businesses. And of course, Google Business Profile and Google Maps are helping us very much on a local SEO basis. Local business has really, really come to the fore again. And again, this is a fantastic tool to ensure that you're there to be found. <clears throat> OK, so I'm going to wait for a couple of answers to come in and then I'll just move on and pick up on some of those as I see them. So as I mentioned, section one, we're going to create a business uh, Google business profile. There you go. So Sarah B. OK, so she's using voice search really popular way. How many of you are using voice search as well? Voice search, again, is uh, the technology has so improved, hasn't it, over the past few years to get you those really accurate results and whatever type of restaurant near me. So again, some commonalities between how myself and Sarah do it. It would be really nice to know if some of you are using that type of phraseology as well. So what are the benefits of a business profile on maps when we're looking for products and services? Well, we're all using our phones pretty much. The smartphone is the device of choice when we're searching for products locally because we're often on the go. We're often busy doing other things and we've got a few minutes to spare. We might be on the bus, on the train or on a break, for example. And then again, that's crucial information to kind of bear in mind because at our fingertips, we can get reviews, we can get ratings, we can get photos. All of that information, when you pull it together, is something that is going to help you in your decision making process. Thus, it's going to be the same for your, for your customers as well. So 33% of people, a few stats for you, look for business hours. 32% are looking for a location. Again, is how convenient is it going to be to get there? And 27% are looking for reviews. Now, I'm certainly one of the people that likes to look for reviews because I want to know if I'm going to get a good service and if this business has helped to make other people happy because hopefully then they're going to make me happy. 27%, I think, is a percentage that's going to go up and up and up. Does anybody else here use reviews as one of their key elements of their decision-making process? I find it absolutely crucial. And I really, really don't spend any money now on any type of service or product uh, until I've actually looked at the reviews for the vendor, for the business that I'm going to use and just seeing how things go. So that's why it's really, really important to utilize, to gain reviews and to utilize them to your advantage as well. So I can see a couple of responses coming in. Uh, Paul, uh, I type in top two Italian restaurants near me. Fair enough. Uh, and Jane, I often use place or city name after restaurant type. OK, to give you that broad sense of what's around. Again, excellent. We, I do a fair amount of traveling around the country. And that's exactly what I do if I'm in a random hotel somewhere looking for something to eat. So fantastic. So again, remember, getting into the mindset of your customers, the things that you do are likely to be replicated in some form by the customers that could well be looking for you. So it's really worth bearing in mind. And again, remembering that on a convenience basis, a lot of people are going to be doing this on their smartphone. So your business in Google Maps. So you can see how your business profile appears on mobile. And then you can also see how it appears on desktop as well. So you can see the business information, the ratings, the locations and the photos. Some good photos there, by the way. I mean, look at that food on the left hand side for Cafe Manhattan. That's making me hungry right now. So Google Maps is integrated with search uh, to build up a user's location and feed them results that are relevant to their location. So that's important. That's why it's so good for local businesses. Someone that's searching for a coffee shop near me, again, that near me, is already at the end of their consumer journey and looking to make a purchase in the near future. So help them by completing a really good and strong business profile so that they choose you. You know, that's what it comes down to. Now, it's a good time to mention that there are going to be a number of links that Sarah is going to share with you in the chat for the duration of this afternoon. So to help you research once the session's finished, click on those, bookmark them and work through. And again, just look at all of the features we're about to cover to see how applicable Google Business Profile and Google Maps can be for you and to help your business grow and to help your business be found. So you can see from the screen there, you can request a quote, you can reserve a table, again, depending on the type of business that you are. Good photos are utterly key. We can see that reviews, handy dandy, has got 
43 reviews are 4.4 average. Cafe Manhattan's got a 4.2 average with 525 reviews. So you can see how all of this business is something that me as a consumer can look at and help me to make my decision to choose that business. Now to those ends, one of the key parts of doing that is to have a complete profile because it does help more customers to engage with you. More information is better than less information, in my opinion. So creating a complete profile is going to help you to be found and seen as reputable and as credible. It's also more likely to attract physical and online visits because you're answering your customers' questions based on the amount of information that you've actually posted. So, you know, that's where the more information rather than less is so, so important. And thus, you're more likely to lead to a purchase because you're joining the dots of your customers with all of the information that you've put up. You've thought about the customer journey in relation to what they want from you and what they might want from your products and from your services. And you've answered all those questions. The information is there, ready and waiting, which means that your customers don't have to go elsewhere in order to find that information. Again, a critical part of the strategy. So as some demonstrations, we've got three different businesses you can see on the screen, uh, Levy & Co, Uncle John's Bakery and Our Kids Trove. Now, these are businesses that are case, case studies available for them. And I think Sarah's going to be able to post a couple of links for those. These are businesses that got themselves listed on Google Maps. So when we look at Levy & Co, we can see instantly the headline figure there that they achieved a 70% increase in online bookings. And overall, there was a 400% increase in mobile web traffic within a year. That is because they had so much information up that they were really, really able to stand out from the crowd and they could really, really appeal to their target audience. Now, customers, their customers, Levy & Co, they've shared the love. Their profiles received over 55 star reviews with many praising what they can see, the haircuts, everything that's going on and the general Levy & Co experience. So another thing for you to be able to demonstrate is the experience, the ambiance, the general look of what it is that you do. Now, when we look at Uncle John's Bakery, so Uncle John's Bakery was another business that was able to benefit from Google Maps. Baker Samuel's business was able to inform customers of their new opening times, their new practices, and provide them with links to their online shop, enabling them to diversify their sales from in-store to delivery. So it opened up a whole new channel for them to get products to customers quickly. They're able to promote their online shop and thus that led to them being able to sell to new and to existing customers. Again, just have a look at some of the links that Sarah's posting. They're really heartening examples of what can be achieved with a little bit of uh, effort and a little bit of dedication. Now, the third business is Our Kids Trove. So customers were emailing to say how much they love their purchases. So I'd ask them to leave me a Google review and even give them a handy link to enable them to do that. So again, making the process easier for the customers. Now, many of them have had organic reviews being left. And of course, it's the gratitude. You're very grateful as a business owner uh, for all of the five star ratings. But again, that really, really helps with the credibility. If I was looking up or I needed a business like our kids drove, one of the first things I'm gonna look at are the reviews. And on that basis, again, trusted reviews from customers that have had a good experience, because it's all very well, our kids drove saying, we're really good at what we do. It's a whole different story when customers say they were really good, they were really helpful, and they really, really helped us to achieve what we needed to achieve. So please do bear these case studies in mind. And I think, again, think um, once you've actually perhaps read the links, what you can do to make sure that your business profile is effective as it possibly can be. So we're going to run through the process. There are four steps to creating a business profile on Google Maps. So we're gonna have a quick run through of those. Now, the steps to set your Google Maps profile are the same as those that are required to set up a Google business profile in general, because they are the same thing. 
A Google business profile automatically syncs with Google Maps. So the critical thing to remember when creating your profile on Google Maps is that particular attention should be paid to optimizing your profile, which we're going to be running through shortly, uh, by ensuring core business information is up to date, including those images, the posts that you want to do, almost like a social media schedule. And we'll get to those in a moment. Now, I'm just going to give you a very quick demo. So bear with me just while I change tab over. And you should see on your screen. There we go. So now you should see on your screen what the dashboard looks like. Now, if you remember, previously you were able to get into uh, Google Business Profile on an app. But actually now it's all managed through Google Search, again, for your convenience and to make every feature accessible, very much so from a mobile perspective too. So go to business.google.com forward slash create. Sarah is going to share that link with you. And you can then look at the categories that we have there. I'll just run my mouse across those. You can edit your profile. You can read your reviews. You can uh, interact with messages. You can add your photos. Performance is your analytics. So you can have a look through there to see how you're posting and how your schedule is actually doing. You've got the option to advertise, to edit your products if you're uploading products. Uh, Q's and A's, you can add updates. You can do so many things straight from this dashboard. So the information provided will appear in Google search. Uh, and again, using keywords, you're going to be matched when a business or when a customer searches for a business like yours. So to get the most out of your profile, as we would have been mentioning, add your name, your address, the category of business that you have, which we'll have a demo for in shortly opening hours and information and any closing times or holidays, make sure that those opening times are correct because people might turn up when you're closed. If it says that you're open online, again, that's not great on the customer credibility side of things. Put your contact details up, link to your website if you've got a website, and then upload cover photos and other promotional images. So as you can see on the dashboard there, just accessible by your own account, which there's me in the corner uh, and your business, because it will be logged in under the same account, the dashboard will come up there ready for you to make any amendments you need to make at a moment's notice. So if I take us back now to the presentation uh, and I'm just going to make sure that that has gone through okay. I, yes, it has indeed. Good. Okay, so we're now going to move on to getting verified. So once you've claimed your business profile on Google, you do need to verify to show that you do actually own the business. So you can do this via Google Maps. You search for your business on Google Maps. And once you've found it, you click on the profile and select claim your business. The profile will expand and you'll be able to click manage now. You'll then be able to enter the information to prove that you are, and again, very important, the rightful owner of the profile in order to complete the verification. So there are a couple of ways that you can do that, again, depending on the type of business that you are. So once you've created your profile, you click verify now. Once you pro if your profile has already been claimed, you'll need to demonstrate that you own that business and there's a process for that. One of the links that Sarah will share with you today, it's a general support page. For anything that you're gonna do on Google Business Profile or Google Maps, I would advise you to look through each page of the support because it's really, really conclusive. It answers all of your questions and it gives you a flow for things to press, uh, for the clicks to make and the reason why the information that you're entering is important. Now, one way of verifying is by receiving a postcard to your business, which contains a five digit verification code. So you take this code and then you input it on the Google Business Profile website. Now, you might be able to verify your business over the phone or via email or through Google Search Console. Google Search Console is a fantastic tool that you can link your website up to. Again, I'll ask Sarah uh, if she gets a moment just to share the Google um, Search Console link for you. The system will then automatically let you know if this is an option for you during the verification process. So depending on the setup that you have, the type of business that you are, your options may differ. So again, just look out for the ways that you are able to verify your business. So we want to move into now populating our Google business profile now that we've started to get it set up. 
Now we're going to look at how we can optimize profiles in a moment, but it really, really is important to keep your information on the profile as up to date as possible. Treat it like one of those jobs that you perhaps need to do or just double check every week or however you feel would be would keep you comfortable. I guess overall treat it like a social media platform make sure that you're constantly providing people with new updates and content and this is the way to work towards optimizing your profile very much for success keep adding photos posts and offers to your profile so that your information stays fresh and relevant and of course search engines and these types of apps so these this type of program absolutely love seeing that you're making consistent and regular changes so to keep your information relevant, manage your profile. And you can, as we've seen from the previous screen, you can do that via the search interface. So keep your content fresh, make sure those opening hours are up to date and manage your profile so that it is demonstrating you and the best of your business. Okay, so that's the first section. That's looking at how people search. That's looking at how we can optimize and build a profile that is going to serve us and our business as well and to give us an advantage because not all of our competitors are doing this you know have a look do some searches on businesses because it, again it may well be the thing that sort of helps you to stand out from other businesses now talking about standing out so we're on optimizing now we want to have a look at some tips to help us to stand out as well so we want to include our key information as we've mentioned utterly utterly vital start to think about and you know if you already work on social media then maybe you have a google my business or google maps schedule or calendar that you build and put up together because you're going to utilize posts and photos you're going to be thinking okay we've got uh, an in-store offer next week or we've got an online offer the week after that and starting to prepare your content ready to be able to demonstrate to your customers now, I mentioned to you about the performance part of the dashboard. That's where your insights are going to be found. Use your insights to work out how your customers are interacting with your profile. And you can then look to see, oh, do I want more people to be phoning me? Do I need to make that more prominent? Do I need to add a phone number and a one click button for people to do that? Am I linking to my website so that I'm driving customers through from my Google business profile straight to my website? It's going to give you a lot of facts and figures to help you think about how you can best carry the information on your profile forward. So including our key information, some stats here, which really do improve your chances of being found and for people to use you in the way that you'd like to be used. 96% are more likely to visit a profile with opening hours. Then they don't make a wasted journey and turn up when you close so make sure they're accurate 42% increase in direction requests for businesses with photos so businesses with photos it's giving the customer some what they're going to know what they're expecting they can see what they're expecting and so again that may well have filled a fair percentage of the decision making process and helps them to interact and come back to you. So I think that's a really, really important thing to be able to uh, keep an eye on too. And 90% of people are more likely to interact with you if your phone number is visible. Probably because if there is something outstanding in their mind or they've got a quick question, again, they want to be able to access you as conveniently as they possibly can, as quickly as they possibly can. So maybe a quick phone call good customer service, again, is going to bring them to your door. So there are some really, really good stats there, really worth bearing those in mind. You know, a few little changes that you can make to your profile there to ensure that those percentages are applying to you and your business. Now, we want to make sure that our core information is up to date. As we've mentioned a number of times, the uh, opening hours update is important. And also the business description. So the, in, the business description, again, use keywords, say what's important about your business in that short phrase. There are 750 characters total there. But again, keep it as succinct as you possibly can. Um, so you can see from the demonstration on the screen, we sell organic seasonal produce and meal kits. So that's actually giving us a lot more information than we might give it credit for. Uh, very, very useful indeed. It tells you exactly what you get, exactly what it is, 
that you are going to be expecting and thus helping people to click through. So use as many characters as you feel represent your business as accurately as it possibly can. So think of all of these things in terms of the user journey. How do you want to interact with your customers online? What information do they need to find? So become a virtual customer of your own business. What would you want to know about your business if you were a first time visitor? So keeping everything up to date, linking our online shop if you've got one as well, all of that facility is there for you. Now, what other information do we need to make customers aware of? Okay, so selecting our business category is something that is crucial. And we can click back onto the demo. I'm just gonna do that for you now and just show you how you can actually do that. Your business category is really, really important and you provide a category on the setup. So there we have, there we go. Okay, so now we can see the dashboard that we saw earlier on. Now, selecting a category helps your business appear across relevant searches. So that's why it's really, really important in both Google Business Profile and Google Maps. It connects with customers looking for businesses exactly like yours. So we're going to use the demo account to show you how to do it. So I'm going to click Edit Profile. Hopefully you can see my mouse moving across there. And then I just move to the business category, business information category, and you can see their business category. So if I click on that, again, you can see how easy this is to do in terms of the information on this being as clear as it possibly can be. But for these purposes, we're gonna choose our primary category, which I'm gonna put in today as a restaurant. So I'm just typing that in now. You change that there, click in, and then you can save that so that that gives your primary category. Now, there are plenty of detailed categories that you can choose. So please do look and try to make it as genuine a match, as close a match as you possibly can. So this doing this this way can give your business a, like a real boost if you primarily target your local customers so be specific you know if you have a, a nail salon choose nail salon rather than just salon so choose a primary category that really does describe your business don't add lots of categories as this can sometimes dilute your profile because you want to be found for the thing that you are the closest thing to that which you represent and where you do your how you do your business Okay, so that's that demo over. I'm going to go back into the presentation. So we've just covered sharing, uh, selecting our business category. So then we want to add our relevant attributes. So displaying how your retail or restaurant business allows shopping can be a great way to make the experience easy. You can display, for example, whether you offer delivery, whether you've got curbside pickup or in-store shopping. You can identify uh, your site as you're being friendly to any uh, group as you wish, and you can show what payment methods are accepted so customers know how to prepare for their purchase. Again, that can be important. You get halfway through a transaction and you think, oh, actually, I need you know my card or whatever it is that I need. Do they take things like PayPal? How, how am I actually going to pay for this? It's really, really good to have that information up front. So, Click on your edit profile and then you're going to scroll to more and then you're going to select your applicable attributes. So you can see on business information there that we um, it's, you've got lots of categories except debit cards, American Express, MasterCard, Visa. So it's going to allow you to really drill down and give your customers the detail that they need. Again, because our attention spans are not massive anymore then we want things done quickly. So giving the information to your customers in as quick a way as you possibly can is maybe something that will strongly contribute to keeping them there rather than going back and finding another business that does give them all of that information up front. So planning your profile is a really, really crucial part of the process. On top of all of the setups, in top of all of the key information that we need to provide, uh, on top of making sure that we're set up and we're verified, one of the 
elements that we need to also spend a little bit of time on is going to be creating those engaging posts we've mentioned a couple of times to really look at your profile almost like a bit like a social media profile so that involves creating engaging posts as i'm sure again if you're working across any of the social uh, media platforms that this is something you're doing already so we've got a useful post there. Again, but please remember that this session is going to be live for the next 24 hours. So if you need to come back and revisit this information, because we're covering quite a lot now, uh, then you're able to do that for the next 24 hours on the link you came in on. So we want to add a title. Describe your event in four or five words so that it stands out. And so it stands out to customers and is easily understood. Provide a call to action. A call to action motivates the customer to do what you'd like them to do. Uh, it's like prompting them or providing them with instructions to buy your products. You know, it's really, really good to be taken to, okay, I'm at this point, now I wanna buy, now I wanna find out more. Give people CTAs or calls to actions to help them through their process, their user journey. Use photos and videos effectively. So take a high res photo, high resolution photo, add it to your post so it stands out. One of the things that can stop people in their tracks when they're scrolling or they're not paying a great deal of attention is a really good visual. So keep the, that in mind and post strong visuals. Now we wanna write a clear description. You know, you have a certain amount of characters, but what we're really saying is to try and do something maybe between about 150 and 300 characters. Use the opportunity to provide more information for your customers, paint a picture for them so that they're clear about what it is they're signing up to, what it is that they're about to find. Make your description as informative and as enticing as possible. And of course, as best you can, ensure your posts are accurate. So do use tools like Grammarly, for example, which checks your spelling and will also check your grammar. Again, on a credibility basis, if I see misspelled posts or apostrophes in the wrong place, sometimes that can put me off a little bit. So having that done, it doesn't have to be your strong point. You just can copy and paste bodies of text into tools like Grammarly, and they will then tell you how accurate they are or what changes they do actually suggest. So please do bear with me. Just a quick sip. So again, lots of information and a clear pathway there to help you to ensure that your posts are engaging and that they're giving the customers exactly what it is that they need. Because there we go, what a great photo accompanied by a really important message. Utilize your photos and videos to stand out. Now, it's not only written posts which can have an impact. Photos are great media in themselves as are videos. So let's go back over a couple of those stats. Business profiles with photos get 40% more requests for directions. You've painted a picture in the customer's mind. 39% of customers say they will stop engaging with a site if images don't appear. So that's a fair percentage. That's nearly 40% of people, if there are no imagery associated with your site or with your profile, people are going to click off and go elsewhere really really key point there and 90 percent of people say they're more likely to visit a business with photos on google results pages so that 90 percent really really should give you a view as to how important uh, these types of impression this type of impression making is achieved and a great photo so if i'm a cake shop i mean look at the photos on the screen again i actually i'm realizing i'm a bit peckish based on some of the food photos that we've seen this afternoon uh, those are great cakes. Those are great cakes, beautifully illustrated. So again, take a bit of time to produce top class images where you can with your smartphone, with your camera and upload them because it can, as for me, making me hungry, that's the point. And that's the point of great photos too. So let's get some tips for taking some photos. There are some key elements, so again, which we're running along the screen for you there to help you really focus in. Lighting is really, really important. So we wanna make sure that our image is well lit and the subject matter is clearly visible. We don't want too many shadows and we don't want darkness. Try and get your light coming from behind the camera directed towards what you're taking the photo of. Uh, and if you're taking a photo outdoors, make sure the sun is behind you. Otherwise, it will blur the camera. Now, focus is important. Try to avoid blurring the shot. 
most smartphones and digital cameras do have autofocus, so maybe that's a feature you'd like to use. Now, you might want to also use something like a tripod, maybe, which helps you to keep the camera steady. So really, really think about your whole production and what it is that you're trying to achieve. Now, you might want to edit. Again, smartphones, there's a great deal of editing software available on your smartphones. I'm not going to recommend any because my experience is that you try a few and you find the one that works best for you. You know, if you don't like something, uninstall it. But there's a great deal of uh, image editing application available across Android, across Apple, whatever device it is that you're actually using. Framing is something that is sometimes overlooked. You want to ensure that everything you want to be seen is in your photo. So what's in the background? So for my example here, I've got a blank uh, background. I've got my plant. Is there anything in front of me? No. Is there anything obscuring the view? No. Is it helping you to focus on me and the content? Hopefully, yes. So choose your space carefully. Give yourself enough room. Give yourself, again, room to be comfortable. Think about camera positions, how you want to look, how you want to be seen, angles and movements. And think about the angles that will show off the subject best uh, and will also keep the viewer interested. And we'll see some great examples of that in the next slide. And then crop. If you want to take things out, remove things, then absolutely crop the image so that it captures the detail that you need. So you can add as many images as you want to add. Uh, we're covering a great deal of formats like the very popular JPEG and PNG. And file sizes can be between 10 KB and 5 me uh, megabytes. Again, for that type of detail, have a look at the support page and make sure that you understand the constraints that you're working to. So that's a really, really important section, I think, on making sure that your photos really, really do stand out. And once you've done that, you can start to understand why this slide, again, is so, so important. So when you're looking at exterior photos, the photo at the top is really, really good because it's well lit. You can see the shot clearly. Nothing's blurred or cut off. And you can also see the store name fully too. That's really, really helpful. Now, the bottom photo doesn't really seem to do a lot. You can't see the store name. The focus isn't on the shop, but a couple of customers. But it's really, really hard to make out. And of course, it looks dark and dim from the outside. So, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that there is certainly uh, the photo on top stands out for a number of reasons. Now, the middle photo for the interior shots, you can get a feel for the interior decor and the products that are on offer. You can see the atmosphere and that there is plenty of the business on show. So really showcasing what it is that you've got to offer. The photo at the bottom is blurred. You can't see what the product is. You can't really see anything. That is not a helpful photo. Photos at work, you've got a happy member of staff there smiling, enjoying their job. A great way, again, for you to pitch your business to the customer. The photo below it almost works, but they've cut off the human element. The, you know, the head is not included in the shot and you can't really work out what it is that they're doing. So maybe that shot at a different angle might work a little bit better, but I would certainly opt for smiling faces, staff being happy and showing that they're enjoying their job and they're enjoying serving their customers. So exterior photos, locate the business. As you can see, it's very, very clear there, Rio Coffee it's there it's standing out and again look at it's a beautiful photo actually and again that looks like a great place to pop in if you've got half an hour spare and the shop front is totally in frame again a little bit of thought has gone into that photo and that will take that photo i think a long way now for interior photos you can infer what kind of business this is and what products are being sold as you can see you can see the counter you can see the displays Everything's visible, it's authentic, it's honest. It's a really open, open photo. The image is bright and well lit. So we're keeping to the principles of what we were saying previously. We're keeping to that. We can see what's going on. There are no shadows. You know, it's really, really clear. And there's a wide selection of products. So again, you might think, well, I wonder if they've got enough for me. Well, they certainly seem to give a lot of choice. And again, that could be very much part of the decision making process when you're deciding where to pop along to and spend your hard earned cash. Photos at work, another great photo that you can see there for a number of reasons. 
You can see the quality of service on offer. That looks like a really clean establishment. They've made nice use of the mirror in the background to almost give the photo even more depth than it has. It's really well framed. It's not claustrophobic. Um, and the business and the customer are clearly, clearly visible. So you get a flavor of the atmosphere and of the business, and you can make your judgment in terms of visiting and going along to that business. You know, a bit of ambiance, you can see the speaker up uh, above the gentleman's shoulder who's cutting the hair there. So it looks like a nice, friendly, happy place to go and visit. Remember that photos, uh, photos can paint a thousand words, I believe is the phrase. And you do get that flavour. You get a real feel for the ambiance. So please do, again, emulate that where possible to give you and your business the best advantage. Now, Street View is another feature. If you don't have many images of the outside of your store, then Street View can help further in the decision making process for your customers. Having a street view brings a lot of benefits. It provides more insights for customers so they can find out information which you haven't been able to list in your profile. You might have a virtual tour so that people get a flavor of the atmosphere and the ambiance before they visit. It shows them what products you're gonna sell, the layout of your venue, which could be important to some in terms of accessibility and where you're located. This really helps to kind of humanize your brand and enables you to build trust. Now, it does, you know, we all look up, I guess, where we're going to go, when we're going, just have a quick sneak peek. So again, you need to be there. It helps us to make informed decisions. So 82% of customers are actually doing that. They're researching before visiting. So you can provide all of that information to help them to make that decision again. Now you do get a general, a local target audience. If customers are looking for stores in your area and they're using Google Maps uh, and Street View, they can drop a pin in your store to the state they'd like to visit and they can see the fastest routes to your store as well. That map is one of the vital areas, I think, in terms of getting people to and from your door and not getting distracted to other businesses potentially along the way. We know where we're going. We know what we're looking for. We know what the store looks like. We know what we're expecting. We've checked out parking in the area. We're ready to go. Now, we mentioned insights again on the performance tab that I showed you on the demo. So insights can be found there. Insights are a key to you really improving your profile. There's a demo you can see on the screen there. So we've been discussing lots and lots of ways that we can in increase the traffic to our stores and market ourselves to our customers. So we need to assess which methods and tactics we've used along the way are actually working. So to see the impact that your photos, your posts and the reviews are having upon the traffic that's going through to your site, visit the Insights section uh, under performance in your Google Business Profile account. It shows how people found your business profile, um, how they're using search and the terms they're using to find businesses like yours and what they're doing once they actually find it. So you can see there in terms of the search, people are searching for this business on the left directly. Uh, where customers view you on Google. So you can see that you've been found listing on search. You can see that there's been 134 views uh, via your search listing. And then there's 52 views that have come from your listing on maps. So you again can work out which one's working better for you and thus for your customers and promote yourself on that channel. You can see how many phone calls you've had. You can uh, get that down to a day of the week or a month or again go back even further which is really really good and we can see that this business gets the most phone calls on a Thursday followed by a Friday so that really helps as well to make sure that you know you're able to answer the phone specifically on these days you need to get someone else in to help you on those days to cover all of those queries you know really really key information to help you run your business effectively and direction requests so where are people coming from you know how far are people willing to travel you can understand that information too via the insights on the performance tab so in summary what we're going to learn from insights is who your customers actually are how they found your profile what they did once they found your profile where they're traveling from, you know, where on the map people are requesting driving directions, what times of day that people are engaging most. So as we saw, how often people are calling your profile to find further information out. So you need to be there ready to answer those calls and how your engagement compares to similar profiles. 
So you will get benchmarks, which is why your business category is important because you'll get benchmarks against, uh, against other businesses. And thus you can see how you're performing. Maybe you want to have a look at those other businesses if you're not performing that well, and maybe make a few tweaks to your profile on some of the best practice that you've identified from, from looking at some of your uh, competitors. So the drop down menu in the top left hand corner of the insights tool allows you to adjust the time frame. So you can see data from the week, the month, or even the quarter. So you can do a real good business analysis. If you hover over a specific day on the graph, you're going to see the data for just that day. So remember that these insights are fantastic to help you to understand where your customers are coming from and how they interact with your content. So let's use those insights to help us to find more customers as well. So insights can help us to understand how our audience behaves, as we've mentioned, adapt to their needs, get some feedback, understand what they found useful in their journey and in the process, talk to them, do that customer service piece, and then you can reach new customers. So you can adapt what you're doing because you've had a bit of feedback. Someone might say, this could be a bit better like this or like that. That's a great way for you to be able to really react to your customers' needs. Um, overviews, words that might come up if it's a restaurant, you know, it's romantic, it was noisy, it was vibrant. You know, reviews are subjective and reviews won't be removed from insights because it does allow you to actually hear firsthand what customers think of your business and what you can do better. And of course, always reply to those reviews as well. So using all of these insights, you can ensure that your profiles are optimized and marketed by Google Ads, smart campaigns, and of course, finding those right keywords, those keywords that people are entering into a search engine in order to find you. So make sure they all match up. Okay, there's a lot of information there. I hope you're uh, doing well and making quite a few notes. You can really see that from what looks like a reasonably simple tool, there's a lot to a Google business profile. And there's a lot that you can do to make sure that you are going to be at the forefront of your customer's mind. So we're going to move into the final section of the presentation. There is a huge range of functionality. So we're going to have a look at some of the functionality within Google Business Profile. We're going to be looking at how we can manage it as effectively as we possibly need to. So without further ado, let's start to do that. Let's manage our Google Business Profile. You go to Google search or to maps, remember, make sure that you're logged into your Google account that's linked to the account you set up your business profile on, and that's where the dashboard will appear. So if you're on maps, press manage your business profile. And if you're on search, then use the dashboard panel that we've demonstrated a couple of times for you. So you can update, you can read reviews and read messages, and you can really monitor your performance and insights. So it's the real hub of everything that's going on. You can see that on the right-hand side again, all of the areas, performance, advertise, add photo, read reviews. All of those areas are there for you to learn about, to understand, and to implement correctly in relation to your business. So we can manage our bookings. How do we manage our bookings? Again, a really usable interface, quite easy to set up, doesn't take too much time at all. Now, I want to spend a couple of minutes kind of explaining perhaps the benefits of doing this. You know, you can add a bookings link in. So turning on that bookings link enables your business. Again, if you have a business that needs bookings, of course, 50% um, of customers want to schedule an appointment when they're searching for a business online. So booking links aren't available clearly for all customers because you need to be a business that does require reservations. Now, you can set up bookings in a couple of ways. You can add a link to your Google Business Profile directly to enable customers to book uh, appointments with you. You can link um, or use third-party booking services, and you can link to those as well. So your profile can contain up to two links for customers in that way. Using a third-party booking system to manage your bookings, 
Uh, it enables, it gives you web and app services that use your customer's Google account, simplifying the booking experience. So again, making it as integrated and as user-friendly as you possibly can. So in terms of steps, again, this is something, if you're gonna go into bookings, I'd advise you to look at the, share, uh, the support page that Sarah's been sharing with you. Run through bookings in great detail to make sure, again, that you're optimizing that service for your customers and that you're getting the desired results. So you click on bookings in your settings, you choose your scheduling provider and sign up. And then within a week, your scheduling account is linked to your Google Business Profile account. So there is a delay in between. So link your accounts and then you can receive those bookings. So you can track bookings that come in via Reserve with Google. Uh, Reserve with Google, again, is a link that I'm going to ask Sarah to share with you. Have a look at that. Uh, look at that web page, Reserve with Google, uh, and you can find that in the booking tab in your Google business profile. And this is going to show you the booking history of your business. So it gives you all of the data you need to actually keep up to date. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time on online reviews. We've, we've touched upon them a few times uh, throughout this session. But again, some startling information to help us focus on reviews. In 2021, 80% of people use Google to evaluate local businesses. So people are looking, people are searching, and people want to know how effective that business has been. 98% of consumers read reviews, with the most popular place for reviews being Google. Fine. So you can see that the business in the top right has had 71 reviews with an average of 4.6. Now, gaining custom reviews can help your business to better understand what you're doing right and what you could improve upon as a business. It can improve the visibility of your business on Google rankings. So well worth getting those reviews in. And of course, it builds trust with your customers. Now, we want to build relationships with our customers by delivering ex excellent customer service. That's something that people often comment on. Um, ask people to review your business online. Make it as simple as possible. Add a URL, so uh, a string, you know, a, a website address uh, to your, your website to provide this so that people can just review it with ease. Now, don't pay for reviews. Uh, and don't leave reviews yourself because the review will appear to have come from you. And again, that's not going to look too great. But yeah, please ensure that you're getting an authentic overview of your customers' interactions with your business. Now, we've mentioned about encouraging customers to do this. So how do we do that? So we collect customer details and send feedback surveys via email. Again, that's an opt-in process. Make sure that your customers are happy to do that. You could share a feedback URL visibly in your store or however you're working, or if you're doing newsletters, it could go on that as well. And you can enable reviews on your Google business profile. One thing that's pretty popular and one thing that we have at the end of this module is doing a barcode, a, a barcode, a QR code rather. So creating a QR code that takes people through to the review page. That's really, really handy. You know, people click, uh, don't click, you just show your camera, the uh, QR code, a little link comes up on your screen, you click it, you can go straight to, through to a review. One of the important things about that is the immediacy. People will often think, oh, I'll leave them review later. But if you leave it till later, often other things have come up, other things get in the way, and probably you're less likely to leave that review. So get people to do it there, there and then. Leave us a review now. Here's a lollipop. You know, here's an incentive. Here's, leave us a review and you can have 10% off your next interaction with us. Encourage people, work with people, understand how people like to work with reviews and use them very much to your advantage. Now, if you're unfortunate enough to receive um, a bad review, you know, it happens, it's unfortunate, but we can turn bad reviews into happy, loyal customers because, you know, we know that things go wrong, but it's how we deal with it. So let's be polite and professional in our resolution and in our response, focus on the solution and help the frustrated customer to come around to your business once a mistake's been made. Try to avoid template responses. People like personal responses because they want personalized solutions, especially if they've been spending some money with you. Now, you can take it offline by providing um, an email address or asking for a contact that you can get 
to the customer directly on rather than having that back and forth that other customers might see online. So you might be able to resolve it further and then leave a comment right at the end. And of course, you use humor sparingly because you don't want to come across as sounding a bit sarcastic. And of course, when money is involved, we all take our money very, very seriously. So therefore, it's worth bearing in mind that we don't want to annoy people further by, you know, not treating their complaint with the seriousness that it deserves. Now we want to chat with our customers. You know, one of the features is very much again like a social media profile that you are able to interact and chat directly through instant messaging. It's a really, really great way. It increases your business efficiency, gets you to answer those questions pretty quickly uh, as well, and it reduces the service costs. Again, it's a very quick process to do. You can set up frequently asked questions which you can um, you know, have automated responses maybe you want to build in. What time do you open? Do you serve vegan food? Is your store uh, wheelchair accessible? And you can churn, turn the chat feature off at any time that you need to do that. Again, maybe outside of hours or outside of hours that you're going to be comfortable to be able to respond in. So there are lots and lots of ways uh, that you can really up that customer service. The chat function is fantastic. And again, it gives customers that immediacy of response that they're probably after. Now we want to take our maps listing even further. We want to make sure that we stand out. So how do we do that? Okay, so what more can we do with Google Maps? And you can see on the screen, you know, we've covered a lot today in the session about how we can get started and optimize our profile overall. But there are some more advanced features. So customers, remember, are making decisions faster than ever with those mobile searches. You can convert online shoppers to in-store or curbside pickup customers by showcasing uh, nearby stores. So you might have um, more than one, perhaps, as you can see on the screen there, giving the people options as to where they go and where they want to go. Now, you can drive more shoppers to your store. Uh, you want to help those customers to find you. So again, as you can see from this screen, uh, <clears throat> getting people to you, Store Locator Plus solution can be a really, really helpful thing to make the most out of those physical locations by integrating offers, um, people that might come along in person, they can integrate those offers and actually spend them in store. Uh, Sarah will pop a guide into the chat for you. Now, with 70% of all online shopping carts being abandoned before an order is placed, that's a high figure. Retailers, retailers really want to simplify and speed up the purchase. So you can make the checkout process easier uh, on customers by using address validation to identify address components to fix errors and validate existing addresses. 5% of which are entered incorrectly. So that functionality to make sure that people are actually inputting their details correctly too, helping the customer to make a sound decision. So all of these features are really, really key to that interaction. And you can see, as you can see, the functionality is absolutely astounding in terms of the things that you can do on an absolutely no cost tool. So you can even take it a step further. You can do 3D tiles and aerial views. You can create immersive visualization with 3D imagery, um, even perhaps showing some of the features that you might see on Google Earth. So another example of how the Google Maps platform is helping to transform businesses is with Solar API. Again, check all of these things out. Again, look at to see if they're going to be suitable for you. Sarah is going to be dropping the links into the chat. There's a lot of links for you to click on this afternoon in order to get the most of what it is you're trying to do. So please do check them out because once you know what you want to include and once you know what you don't want to include, you've got a list and a systematic way to work through to include the most important elements for you and the most important elements that you think are going to be important to your customers. Without your customers, nothing really happens. And that's the important thing. So again, make sure that the functionality not only suits you as a business, but also is appealing directly and is compelling to your customers. Because ultimately, of course, they're the ones that are going to be making the purchases at the end of the day. Okay, so that was a lot, wasn't it? I hope you've really, really enjoyed that. We are just coming towards the end of the session. I can see that Sarah has done an amazing job. Thank you so much, Sarah. 
uh, in terms of answering all your questions. And I can see that actually, uh, as often happens with Sarah, because she's so good, she's answered all the questions for you. There was a lot of information in this one, so I'm very, very grateful for that because it's helped me to focus in on things which I think you're going to find important when you're setting up and when you're thinking about your Google business profile. Now, as I mentioned to you, the last screen's got a QR code. So scan that with your phone. It's going to be on screen now. I'll leave it up for a moment. That's our feedback. We would love to have your feedback. And Sarah will also, I think, pop a link into the chat for you. So if you have your phone, you've got the camera on, and you scan on the QR code, it should open an address. There's also an address there, the bit.ly forward slash 3Q375A1 that will take you through to our feedback form. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know what we can do more of for you to help you even more than we are already doing. That just leaves me really to say thank you very much indeed. Please don't forget the Grow with Google site, the Google Digital Garage site, so g.co forward slash digital garage. Go and sign up for some more of these sessions and really move yourself along. So we're coming towards the end of a long week probably and quite a long Friday. So I'm just going to wish you all the best. Have a fantastic weekend and I hope to see you again soon on another Google Digital Garage live broadcast. See you again soon. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.